You're listening to The David Knight Show. Welcome back. The staff was telling me, reminding me, and I've talked about this in the past, we have several uh, high school stadiums, football stadiums here in Texas that cost tens of millions of dollars. A high school football stadium, tens of millions of dollars. How's that for priorities? One of them, what is that, $60 million? They, they keep going up, uh, upping the ante on these things because it's a, you know bragging rights. Our football stadium is bigger than yours. But uh, <laughs> I, I don't really – now here's something that President Trump has come out with uh, that really is relatively cheap to do to protect the electric grid from EMPs. And you might recall the movie Amerageddon that was done by Gary Haven. Uh, he was in it. He produced it. Uh, also, uh, Alex Jones is in it. Uh, I had a tiny role uh, reading the news <laughs> in that movie. But that was all about the disaster following an EMP, uh, which is a very effective way to take down an electric grid and something that can be very, very difficult to get back up and running because they don't just have a lot of these parts sitting around on the shelf. So if somebody were to do something like that, uh, we could be out. Uh, we could be back to the Stone Age for quite a long time, taking down the the grid. However, if we act uh, preemptively, and this is the point of uh, Gary trying to get people to do something about it, maybe he got President Trump's attention or somebody did. Uh, it can be relatively cheap to protect the electric grid uh, from these types of power surges that be created uh, from exploding a nuclear weapon in the atmosphere, creating an EMP, an electromagnetic pulse. We have an update on the Kate Steinle murder uh, by a migrant in San Francisco. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has unanimously upheld a lower court's decision to dismiss a wrongful death lawsuit brought by Kate Steinle's parents against the city of San Francisco, saying that the city's sanctuary status could not be the basis for liability regarding their daughter's death. And I have an update on the sanctuary status and how, folks, it will be the death of our elections and our representation if we don't pay attention to the census. And something that is very troubling to me, and I'll talk about this later in the broadcast, the government is now moving the people that they put in charge of censoring the Internet in the place of conducting the census. And it kind of makes sense. You know, those two words, censor and census, actually come from Rome. Uh, the censors were the people who were tasked with counting the citizens for the purpose of taxation. Not so much for representation, but for taxation, I guess. Uh, here, we have built in the Constitution. We take the census because we want to know how many citizens we have so that they can get represented in the House of Representatives and, of course, in the Electoral College. And... President Trump's question, which has always been on the census, that's the whole purpose of the census, is to count the citizens. And there was always a question, are you a citizen? That question was removed by George W. Bush. Isn't that interesting? You know, the open border Republican establishment and the Obama administration, which, of course, is open borders as well, decided they would no longer ask that question. President Trump said, we're going to ask that question. We've now had two federal judges say, no, you're not. And if we let those federal judges shut down the essence of the census to count citizens for representation, then these sanctuary states will get greater representation in Congress. They will get greater representation in the Electoral College. They will rig our elections by counting foreign citizens who are here criminally trespassing. We have to stop that. We cannot allow that to continue to move forward. It is another one of these existential issues, just like the border itself, and perhaps even more urgent <clears throat> as the census is going to be taking place next year in 2020. Now, as we're talking about guns and the uh, murder of Kate Steinle by the guy who said, no, you know, the gun just went off. It was just sitting here. I don't know how it got here. I don't know how it went off. It just killed uh, Kate Steinle, and then I got rid of it. And, of course, it, was, it belonged to a government employee. He took it out of a government car. Uh, the, the, the government employee left it on the car. I, you know, because, you know, we don't have to worry about being responsible 
uh, about any of that. Can you imagine if that had been a private citizen? Uh, but uh, the government has absolutely no liability in that, right? They let, actually invited foreign citizens to come in and criminally trespass, rewarded them for doing so. And then another government employee carelessly leaves a gun laying around in an unlocked car. And this uh, foreign citizen, uh, illegal alien, picks it up, shoots her and says, I have no idea how that happened. And it's like, fine, nobody's responsible. Nobody's bad. But somebody died. And the uh, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, of course, uh, doesn't seem to care. We now have Ilhan Omar, however, trying to place the blame. So nobody is to blame for Kate Steinle's death in San Francisco. But President Trump, of course, according to the leader of the Sisterhood of Traveling Burkas, Ilhan Omar, according to her, President Trump is to blame for the New Zealand shooting. It's President Trump's fault, of course. During public testimony before Congress, she questioned a senior fellow at the Arms Control Association, Jeff Abramson, about U.S. State Department policy changes that streamlined the process for American gun manufacturers to sell weapons to other countries. Does she have any evidence that these guns were part of that? Oh, of course not. We don't need any evidence. We just spent nearly three years, folks, because it is nearly three years. This whole thing began in the summer of uh, 2016. Mueller was going for 675 days, I think is the count. Was that it? Or was it 666? I think it was 675, right? Uh, but uh, that's the length of his investigation. All this stuff about Russian collusion, that began with Hillary Clinton. That was her narrative to distract people. So for nearly three years, we had an investigation, quote unquote, that was devoid of any factual connection. So why not have Ilhan Omar go out there and uh, blame President Trump for what's going on in New Zealand, and let me tell you what's going on in New Zealand. The police there are now going door to door, uh, place of, from uh, place of work, uh, job to job, and so forth. We've got one gun owner that has now been killed by the police as they go through their gun confiscation. Uh, it's uh, they said they're going to places of employment, homes, even visiting gun ranges. One person posted up said, uh, "Needless to say, my workmates were shocked." to see me taken into a room for a chat. These guys are quite nice about it, but they wanted to know what my partner and I have. Quite nice about it, yeah. That's the thing, you know. The, the police in New Zealand and the UK, they can be quite deferential, can't they? Until they give you the back of the hand. <laughs> Until they shove you into the squad car and road trip you because you were exercising your free speech rights and they don't like Christians talking on the street corner. I uh, said, I didn't put in any paperwork or forms in yet, so I was a little shocked to see them come out of nowhere. Anybody else get this yet? Any reason why they would have chosen me? I'm a bit confused. I'm worried. I'm scared. That they just rock up and pull out the notepad and say, tell us what you got. Well, another guy was also freaked out. He's a former Russian soldier. He was fingered because his son put up on social media a picture of him with an airsoft gun. We'll tell you how he died when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back. Reports are now coming in from New Zealand that the police are going from uh, place of employment to homes to uh, gun shooting ranges, rounding up anybody that they believe has a gun, pulling them in, questioning them. One person has now died. Uh, here's another uh, person talking about uh, what happened to him. He said, a mate of mine had the cops turn up his house after an image of a friend of his had posted on Instagram uh, holding his AR-15, he got reported. They asked to see his safe. He complied. They confiscated his AR-15 as well as his semi-automatic 22. although they admitted that they weren't sure that if that would be affected under the new law. They suggested that he might get the 22 back. They gave him a police property form with all the details of what they were holding, and they took the guns with him. And that's, isn't that nice? You know, they can be so polite, can't they? I think back to uh, Brazil. Terry Gilliam, uh, the guy that worked, uh, the American who did the artwork for Monty Python, his Monty Python version of 1984. Uh, and, of course, uh, the central uh, part of that that begins the uh, program, the, the, the movie, is that they're looking for somebody named uh, Buttle or Tuttle or whatever, but... Uh, the guy in the office, and, of course, all the technology there doesn't quite work. It's kind of like a Tesla. 
you know, they've, they've got all this high-tech stuff, but it doesn't quite work. And he's swatting a fly, falls into this, this uh, typewriter, physical typewriter. And they, they got the monitors that, uh, that have little tiny monitors, and they got these big Fresnel lenses to magnify. <laughs> it, it just, everything is a kludge. But the uh, fly falls into the typewriter, and it, uh, it says uh, Tuttle instead of Buttle or whatever. They, go, they look up the guy, and they go to the wrong address. And it's a over-the-top. No knock raid, and this was quite frankly when I saw this, it was an over the top parody, but now it isn't. Now this kind of stuff happens all the time. Uh, this was before the no knock raids became common currency here in the United States in the name of the war on drugs, and so these guys come busting into the place. They cut a hole into the ceiling and everything, and and uh, rappel down. They arrest the guy, they put him in a bag, put a bag over his head, and, you know, he's hogtied. And they come over with all their paperwork. Uh, could you sign this, and this, and this, and this, and here's my receipt for your receipt? Okay, thank you. And the, and the mother is just flummoxed. They have absolutely no idea what's going on. No explanation, no charges, but the police were ever so polite. <laughs> and evidently, that's what's happening here. Maybe he'll get his gun back, maybe he won't. Maybe they'll just ban it in the meantime before they return it. But somebody has died, a former Russian soldier. Uh, this guy was a veteran of the Soviet and later the Russian Army. He spent time in Afghanistan and Chechnya. He was assigned to a special forces unit. And that may explain why uh, he perhaps had PTSD. He got reported to the New Zealand police because his son posted a photo of him wearing a Russian Army helmet and posing with an airsoft rifle, an airsoft rifle on social media. An airsoft rifle. And so a little snitch called the police. And he gets SWAT teamed. And um, he was afraid of going to prison. So he called his son, talked to his son for a while. It resulted in a standoff because he's like, I'm not going to prison. And again, I don't know what was going on with this guy. He was um, uh, had been in the military in Russia. Maybe he had PTSD. But he was afraid when the police show up and he gets into a standoff and uh, they believe that he committed suicide. A 54-year-old, uh, Troy Dubovsky, uh, told uh, the, the press that he was sought by police after his property in Christchurch suburb of St. Martin's was searched on Tuesday. Anyway, uh, after they searched his residence, they found an 8-millimeter blank pistol the suspicious airsoft rifle, uh, and if you don't know what airsoft is, it shoots little hollow plastic pellets that have no weight on them. So, you know, people use them for playing games, you know, like shoot 'em up games, kind of like a paintball gun, but it doesn't hurt as much. Uh, so he had an airsoft rifle, he had a blank pistol, and he did have a real gun. He had an SKS carbine, which is now illegal. It wasn't illegal before, but it is now illegal. So they report him based on a profile picture on Facebook five days ago, and he is, uh, winds up in a standoff with the police and perhaps committed suicide. Which brings us to Roseanne Arquette, <laughs> who says that Trump's America is a, quote, sick dictatorship of normalized racism, rape, mass killings from guns, pedophilia, homophobia, and the destruction of our environment. And he, she says that this government of President Trump has normalized stupidity. No, Rosanna, you and Hollywood did that a long time ago. You normalized stupidity a very long time ago. And you're still normalizing it, I guess, pushing it. Now, the pedophilia stuff, I mean, wh how is that coming after pre That's Hollywood. That's Hollywood that's doing that. I mean, we just had Barbara Streisand saying Michael Jackson, his sexual needs are his sexual needs. Who are we to judge, right? Maybe it was his DNA. Maybe it was his childhood. But who are we to judge? He had needs in these so-called, you know, I, she said, I totally believe these kids. Yeah, they were molested, but they didn't die. So what? And you've got people like uh, Roman Polanski that she also, and all of Hollywood has gotten behind. You're talking about rape and pedophilia? And Hollywood supports Roman Polanski and Michael Jackson and Woody Allen? 
you know, Mia Farah and, and her son were out there virtue signaling about Harvey Weinstein and everything when they got, they got this uh, big skeleton following them in the closet called Woody Allen. But no, I mean, it's the it's Streisand and Mia Farah and people like Roseanne Arquette that have normalized stupidity, that have normalized pedophilia. And uh, yet she's still talking about President Trump and cannot believe that there's nothing in the Mueller investigation. She said he's not concerned. Just tweeted this out earlier this week before she went on about all the stupidity. <laughs> uh, he's not concerned about the welfare of our country. His loyalty is to Russia and to Saudi Arabia. He is not exonerated. We don't have the full report. And if there's nothing to hide, then show us. Well, that's right. There is nothing to hide, and we've been showing you that it's the Democrats who are trying to hide the stuff. And here's what they're trying to hide, folks. Here is the massive bombshell that had just come out today. Two pundit reports that Justice Department insiders have just dropped a massive bomb on Bob Mueller. His special counsel team concluded months before the 2018 election that there was nothing there, but they held this report from August of last year. What happened in August of last year? Let's see if I can remember. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's when they shut down InfoWars and Alex Jones. And at that point in time, you know, they, they weren't trying to affect the election, were they? I mean, they shut down InfoWars and Alex Jones. They purged this channel on YouTube. As we're in the middle of a live broadcast, never had any strikes against us at all. And then two months later, they shut down another 800 sites who were opposed to war, to the police state, surveillance state. And then they shut down 10,000 users on Twitter on orders of the DNC and said, uh, we got a list here of another 90,000 we're going to shut down. All of that happened before the election. And also before the election, Bob Mueller had, and his team had concluded that there was no collusion, yet they kept silent so the Democrats could win the midterms in 2018. Uh, the most important portions of the investigation were concluded in August of 2018, said a high-ranking Justice Department official. Quote, Rod Rosenstein was briefed. Rod Rosenstein. And it was con common gossip and well-known that nothing had been penned on Trump and that they were going to wrap it up. So three months before the elections, when, right at the time, when they began the crackdown on InfoWars, at that point in time, they already knew that this Russia gate thing was a hoax. They concluded that they had absolutely no evidence. We told you it was a hoax when they first came out with it. We'll be right back. Stay with us. The scientists at InfoWars Life have created a powerful formula for inflammatory support and joint support. Discover the power of ancient medicine with Bodies. Bodies contains one of the most potent forms of turmeric available. Turmeric has been used for thousands of years and is one of the most studied herbals today. It is well known in traditional medicine for its soothing properties. Our pure turmeric extract plus piperine from black pepper makes for optimal absorption to help boost and support your flexibility, mobility, joint function, immune system, and so much more. Regular turmeric root from the store only contains 1-5% to of active ingredients, but our turmeric root extract contains over 95% of the active ingredients. Bodies combines turmeric with organic herbs such as spearmint, sage, lemon balm, and thyme to work synergistically for full body support. Try Bodies today at InfoWarsLife.com or call us at 1-88-253-3139. 